Hi there again and thanks for joining us. In our last video we hooked up the Redux Simple Router so that we could add routing to our app and we created a single route so that going to the root URL would show us the edit profile component that we've been working with so far. You may notice here that I've changed it so that the root URL renders this posts component which is renamed from index and imported from the posts module and we can see up above on the left that that's just a bunch of markup and I copied and pasted this from the uh, pure CSS uh, layout that I downloaded for this. We can see here what it looks like and this is really just to get an idea of what we have to support for our blog. So obviously we have a title and some author information. We have some tags here. I'm going to skip those for now. We also have different kinds of content. At the bottom we have an image gallery. At the top we have what looks like free text, but in reality we want to probably support rich text. And I'm going to do that using Markdown instead of an actual rich text editor. And I'm also going to support code snippets. Uh, since this is a tech blog, we really want to have code snippets and the ability to do syntax highlighting for multiple languages. Let's take a look at the data structure we're going to use for this. We have a post object here that has a title, which is just a string, an author object, and a whole bunch of these blocks. Now these blocks are content blocks, and each one has a different format. The format's a required property, and the value of that property is going to decide which component is used to render the block. But beyond that, they could all have different properties. Uh, for example, the markdown and snippet uh, blocks both need a text property, but the snippet block is alone in needing a language property because the syntax highlighter needs to know what language uh, to parse in order to highlight correctly. And we can probably support the image gallery with just an array of image URLs, and we can probably support a YouTube content block with just a YouTube video URL. One thing about this form, though, is that while it looks fairly simple, um, it's actually both deep and polymorphic, and when we think about how we're going to display all this information in our app, we're going to have a bunch of different components displaying different pieces of it. And we're managing the state with Redux uh, using reducers, and so this can get a tad bit on the complicated side, and we can make it a lot easier by bringing in a package called Redux Form, which uses its very own reducer to manage all the state for your form. So let's start by installing it. And then let's wire it up. So the reducer for Redux Form is available uh, by the reducer name, which I'm going to rename. Sorry, Redux Form, not Redux Router. And I'm going to include it at the bottom. One change I can make here is I can get rid of this because that's actually redundant in ES6 and I prefer to be concise. Uh, after saving that I see my page flickered so everything is still in working order. So let's go ahead and create our uh, form component that we're going to use in order to render our form. import my usual band of uh, React utilities and a couple of new guys called Redux form and add array value uh, where the first is needed in order to create any Redux form and the second is needed in order to add uh, dynamic well we'll be using it to dynamically add blocks to our form but in general any array value uh, this is what you would use if you wanted to add more entries so these come from Redux form, and we define a component. And it's going to have some fields. That sounds like an array, but it's an object. And it's supplied by Redux form, and it's based on what fields we tell it that we care about. We'll see that in just a minute. I'm going to return a form, 
and that form will have some pure CSS classes and it's also going to pass in this handle submit function that's a prop that's going to be passed in from the uh, Redux form that will have to actually pass in an on submit function and then it passes in a uh, handle submit function that will call our on submit function uh, close that out and then let's add a save button so we'll wrap that up in a button list and it'll be a submit button with a couple pure CSS classes and we'll just give it some text of submit and that's really all the markdown sorry all the markup that we're going to need at the moment for our form what we'll export is the result of calling redux form and applying that to the form component we defined and this first argument is an object literal where you have to give it a form name and you also have have to supply a list of fields now, for me right now, I'm going to skip uh, some of what we saw in the data structure. I'm just going to care about blocks uh, and their associated fields. Format is required always. I'm going to use text and I'm going to use language. That will get me what I need to add a snippet, which is the first thing that I want to support. It will also be sufficient for supporting markdown later. Now. As a second argument, I don't care at all. But as a third argument, I have the opportunity to inject some properties. So I'm going to inject an add snippet function that calls the add array value function that we imported from Redux form. So the form we're adding it to is posts. The array that it's being added to is called blocks and the values that it's going to add to that array is an object literal will have a format of snippet and a language of JavaScript that should be all we need uh, for our form component now we will need a uh, container component of sorts so I'm going to define a new.js, which means that it will be for new blog posts. Import some React stuff. Uh, this is also a connected component with Redux. Now, as far as props for my new component, I think I will care about the uh, profile that's part of my application state. Because I think I'll use that when I submit my blog so that I can associate the uh, current sign in user with uh, the author of the blog. Handle submit is something that we need to, to define it will take some form data and for now it will just log it to the console in the future this data will become part of our application state uh, will it will emit an action and it'll go through the reducer and then our collection of blog posts will include this one uh, that we're creating here also some initial values can be supplied to the redux form and for a lot of properties it's not very important to supply initial values but for arrays it's a good idea to supply uh, an empty array let's have a render function that returns nothing but the form which we did not import yet so let's do that before we forget so we'll return the form it will have an on submit function this dot handle submit and we'll also supply the initial values with that property and then in order to connect to our application state we have our usual map state to props function We'll get our profile from state.profile, serialize that,
and we'll export the connection of those components. Now I will need a route to reach this component. So first I'll have to import it in my routes file, import the component we just defined. And I'll need to add a route for it. So for now I'll just do posts slash new. We can refine this later. It will render the new component. And we will need to update the sidebar so that we can actually get here. And I think that what I will do is, since I'm not really going to be using this profile link for a while, I'll change that to posts.new and link to the new post. Here's my new post link. And there's my lonely little submit button. So it is time to give him some friends. The first uh, component that I want to support, as I mentioned before, is the snippet. So I'm going to make my snippet component here. And in order to support um, code editor functionality, I'm going to need to bring in another package. That's called React Code Mirror. So let's get this wired up uh, to our component here. So we'll import the component itself. And for now, we are going to import a single mode. Um, you have to import each mode that you, each language mode that you want CodeMirror to support. And for right now, I'm just going to do JavaScript. Now, my snippet component uh, takes a couple of properties here, and that's language and text. And while you would assume those would be strings, remember that these are actually wrapped by Redux form. So what we actually have is a whole bunch of objects that, you know, their underlying values might be strings, but they are uh, much more than that. They have functions attached to them and other things that we'll see in a little bit. I also need a handle change function. So that will be uh, fired from the code mirror component. And it will give me the text that's uh, currently inside that field. And I can pass that text into the on change function of a uh, Redux form field, uh, in this case, text. So the on change function is what will actually send it through the Redux action emitter, through the Redux reducer, and update the state of the text field. So that's pretty important. Let's uh, define our render function. I'll just return a div with the uh, code mirror component inside. We'll feed it our language prop as the mode, and we'll give it a theme of Erlang Dark, which actually isn't going to work until I import some styles, but we'll get to that in a bit. And the value uh, that it will display by default is this uh, .props.text. And on change, we will call our handle change function so that Redux form can update the state of our, uh, of our text field. So that should be enough to define our snippet component. I'm going to save it. And then we'll have to uh, actually display the snippets in the form. And of course, initially, there won't be any. So we'll have to be able to add some too. But first things first, uh, in order to return the snippet for each block, I'm initially going to assume that every block is a snippet, since I haven't added support for anything else. So in this.props.fields.blocks, we have all of our blocks. And we can map those. We'll take a block and an index. And we'll return some markup. That'll start out with a div that has a key. And that key can just simply be blocks dash uh, whatever this index is.
And then what we can do inside there is render the snippet component, which we haven't imported yet. So we better make sure to do that. And all we need to pass into this is the props from the block, because that's going to include uh, language and text, which is all we need to pass in. So now that we have those blocks, we can render them on our form. And of course, uh, we don't have any blocks yet, and so we're going to add a button that will uh, make use of that uh, add snippet function that we passed in. So I'll have another button list here, and I'll take uh, just a link that's styled like a button. And on click, we will do this.props.add snippet. Now we have our add snippet button. If everything is wired up correctly, we uh, should see a snippet block appear as soon as we click this. So let's give it a try. Looks like it didn't work. Uh, we made a mistake somewhere. And I see where it is here. Uh, we did not name our form properly in the add array value method. So this still doesn't work, and uh, we'll have to look for another mistake. Looks like I made another misspelling. Hopefully this is the last one. Looks like we have one more problem yet. Probably another misspelling. There we go. Now we have our code editor working. Let's add some styles so it looks a little bit better. I mentioned that we would have to do something about the uh, Erlang dark theme. And we're also going to uh, need to style our buttons. So let's open up our style sheet and take care of that. So I have my Erlang dark theme and my regular code mirror CSS. I'm also going to uh, paste some CSS that comes straight off of the uh, pure CSS website. So those are much nicer looking buttons. I add a snippet, nice dark background. Very nice uh, syntax highlighting for JavaScript. And I can add as many as I want. That concludes today's video. Join us for our next lesson where we will uh, fill this out a little bit more, add other types of content blocks, and uh, eventually add some preview functionality as well.